So today I'm going to be talking about Polaris DVM frameworks um, and kind of give a high-level overview of BearChain as well. Um, so a little context on myself, DevBear, um, CTO of BearChain. Um, and BearChain is an EVM-compatible uh, L1 built on the Cosmos SDK. Um, and what we did is we replaced the traditional proof-of-stake system with what we call proof-of-liquidity, which allows for um, reutilizing uh, staked assets to provide liquidity and making validators, um, validators, <coughs> sorry, validator stake weight um, associated with how much liquidity they're providing. So before we get started, just want to give a little intro of our team. Our team comes from a wide variety of sorry, team comes from a wide variety of backgrounds, um, including Web two, Web three, all over the place, and wouldn't be able to to build anything without them. Really clear. Yeah. So why EVM? Um, you know, this being a, a Cosmos adjacent con, 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 conference, um, a lot of people ask us, like, why, you know, why EVM? And the simple answer is there's the developer tooling and just the access to, to utilizing the technology is so much simpler. Um, you know, there's millions and millions of JavaScript developers, and we see the EVM as kind of the JavaScript of, of blockchain. And we think that by utilizing these type of technologies and making it really easy for, for people to build applications, that we can onboard more users um, into, into blockchain in general. And the next question is, why Polaris? And when we sought out to build BearChain, we had a lot of complicated logic that we had to add to the base layer. And we saw that just like simply forking guests or taking another EVM framework made it extremely, extremely difficult to do this. Um, we looked into kind of some other app chain frameworks, and we realized that the commonality between them was that a lot of the time that they would get to something that was EVM-ish. And the problem with EVM-ish is that it's different than what developers assume. It's different than what people assume. And then you end up with compatibility issues like we've seen with like ZK Sync and some of the other, other L1s, where it's just not close enough, and it can lead to problems and just poor developer experience. And the idea here is that we want to introduce an easy way for app chains to create an EVM equivalent EVM that allows for them to just plug it in, drop it in, and create easy and a nice environment for extensions, et cetera. And the idea of this is that we wanted it to be modular. So we wanted a way to completely break apart all of the different aspects of the stack, very similarly to the concept taken from the Cosmos SDK. So you know, being built on Cosmos, we have the networking layer, the consensus layer, and then the Cosmos layer as our traditional application layer. And we propose adding a new runtime layer on top of it, which allows for the VM to be completely separated from the Cosmos runtime, which allows for it to be running a fully native standard EVM um, like you would see on Ethereum mainnet. And how we accomplish this right now, given the limitations of Comet and the SDK, is we actually are able to build EVM blocks from the data that's provided from Comet. Um, so we take things like the, just the block header in general, block height, block timestamp, et cetera, aggregate all the transactions out of it, and are able to construct an EVM block that is equivalent to, to how you would see on, on mainnet. Then what we do is we apply all the EVM state transitions, and then we essentially post that block back up to the Comet chain or the Cosmos chain and store its state root in the IVL tree. So how, how do we do this? When we, went, when we went to set out to build an EVM that's interoperable with Cosmos and ABCI in general, we wanted to come up with like, what is the simplest, easiest way to build a blockchain? And at the end of the day, we see it as pretty much three main processes. So the first is that you need a way to like, build the block and assemble the block. So you're taking effectively a list of transactions, ordering them in some way. You need to then, once you have that list of transactions, you need a way to process them. Um, you know, apply the VM state transition, store the data, et cetera. And then lastly, you need a way to actually commit the block and make that part of the canonical chain. So in ABCI, this is prepare proposal, process proposal, and finalize block. And in geth, this is your, you know, your geth miner, your geth state processor, and then your store is your state DB or your blockchain. So we realized that a lot of common blockchain frameworks other than just geth and Cosmos kind of follow the same general pattern. So we realized that in Polaris, what we could do is we can go and actually generalize this into basically three main interfaces or three main kind of constructs, a block builder, a block processor, and then a storage provider. So what we do in Polaris is we essentially bifurcate the actual block building and processing and storage from the execution itself. Um, so in order to maintain that perfect kind of JSON RPC compatibility with EVM, um, you know, mempool, block building, et cetera, is we actually run all of, the, all of the kind of block building and storage on the Cosmos side and effectively just use message passing to allow the EVM execution client to do all the things that it needs to do. So for instance here, we have an example here. If I would just submit a transaction for, for executing an EVM, I would actually do that directly to the Ethereum side, JSON RPC, and that would get inserted in the mempool. From there, that gets passed over basically a message system which allows for ABCI to pick it up. 
So then the builder is able to pick it up, and then that's how the proposal is made. So all of that is done on the Cosmos side, but the actual user was interacting with the EVM side. Secondly, from there, we process that proposal. That basically, again, is taking that list of transactions that was built, processing it through the system, that's talking to storage, that's talking to the actual EVM interpreter, et cetera, and it's all done through this message passing channel. And then lastly, we need a way to store what we did. So simply in finalized block, we're able to go and just write it to disk and say this now block is in the chain. This also kind of allows us for queries as well. So we not only do we able to support like native EVM transactions, but also full JSON RPC compatibility for queries, et cetera. Um, and we do it through a similar model. The message dispatcher is able to get the request from the RPC, talk to the Cosmos storage, and handle it that way. This also works for you know, transaction simulation, for you know, if you were running a, a searcher that's trying to build a block, you could do, do it this way. So the ETH call goes through JSON RPC, goes to the dispatcher, and is able to touch not only the storage, but can touch the processor, which touches the EVM interpreter, et cetera, et cetera. What this also allows us to do is it allows us to make all these components really, really pluggable. So in, in the traditional kind of, if you were to compile it all together, you'd have to kind of choose an EVM and, and you're stuck with what you kind of choose with. Um, but what we're working on is making it so that you can plug in kind of different components from different clients and make it so you can really increase the client diversity. So this example here, you could take you know, the transaction pool from REF or the mempool from REF. You could use Aragon's RPC, which is notably very, very well done. And then if you just wanted to use like the standard get EVM, you could totally do that. At the same time, you could just choose to use all of them, which is, you know, if you really like Rust, for instance, you can do it this way. Lastly, we also engineered something that we call the pre-compiled development kit, which allows people to write these extensions to the EVM or these pre-compiles in a way that's like really, really friendly. Um, traditionally, if you look at this like pre-compile example from Geth, you have to like write these really convoluted, simple kind of structs that are really kind of hard to use, right? You take input bytes, the return type is bytes, and overall, it's just a very kind of raw experience, which makes it really difficult for developers to add uh, functionality to their, to their app chain or to their, to their layer one or two. Um, but what we did is we made it so that you are trying to get towards the concept of writing a precompile should be as familiar as possible to someone who is um, Solidity or, or Viper native. Um, so if you look on the left here, this is for the Cosmos staking module. We have like a staking.sol, which is effectively you know, getting your validators, delegating, et cetera, et cetera. And we're actually able to map those types directly to ghost trucks using reflection, et cetera. Um, so if you look here, you know, comma.address is the address, which adheres to kind of what we see in Solidity. You know, return types being big int is like a UN256, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then what we do is we utilize that same cost concept of the message patching. So when we kind of see a precompile and we call it, we're able to use the, the message dispatcher to pass that over to the precompile manager, which can call the corresponding Cosmos module, um, which is really, really nice from that developer user experience perspective. So at the end of the day, we can have all this cool tech, but what do the advancements actually enable? So the first thing that I think is really cool is it allows for, in the first time in Cosmos, to have genuine client diversity. On Barachain, for instance, we wrote all of our transactions to the EVM, and by proxy, all of them will be utilizing different clients depending on what, you know, what execution client that validator or node is running. Um, this is really good for exploits. It's just generally a good practice to have. Um, and overall, it is the first time in Cosmos that we've seen this, which we think is a really, really exciting addition. Um, lastly, it allows for some really interesting uh, things to happen at the base layer. You've created a nice way to not only you know, write application logic, but also introduce that application logic into the base layer and create really cool things. Um, it allowed us to write some of our DeFi logic that we use in our proof of liquidity system on Bear Chain and tie that into ABCI in a really native way. Um, and it allowed us to kind of start building some of these interesting products like Flash Bear, Slinky, which is the Oracle that I mentioned uh, during the panel, and then things like integrating Rollkit into Polaris, IBC into Polaris, et cetera. So um, earlier today, I did a workshop with Diego and Josh from Celestia that was basically showing some of the modularity of Polaris and, and really showcasing how truly EVM equivalent it is. Um, so we had a, uh, the Celestia DA DevNet running that's being used for data availability and consensus. Then we had a Polaris SDK chain that was integrated with Rollkit that was rolling up to the DA. And then lastly, to really show off that EVM compatibility, we were able to deploy an OP stack chain that's utilizing that Polaris chain for its settlement, um, which really goes to show how we truly have like an EVM equivalent chain, not only from an execution perspective, but RPCs and everything all the way down, um, as the OP stack deployment stuff is uh, notoriously a little finicky. Um, and there's a really good test to see where we are at. 
And that's everything I have. Thank you guys for coming. So it would be for any Polaris chain. So it would be enabling like a chain that is running in Polaris that has you know 100 validators to create client diversity within their chain themselves. So it would allow for you know for for, for like the EVM. Yeah, for the EVM. Right. Okay. Yeah. Is is Polaris a like a con consensus middle layer? So the way you think about it is it allows for any Cosmos chain to integrate an EVM really, really easily. So because it's completely separated, all you have to do is kind of import the, this module, and it's allowed, allows it to talk to Oh, it's a module. Yeah, allows it to talk to an execution client. Yeah. Oh, so like if an existing app chain that does not have it yet, they could plug it in and upgrade? Yep, 100%. Oh, cool. That's useful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, is the idea behind something like a flash para to essentially have like proposer builder separation for Polaris chains, or is it more like the current uh, version of like MEB boost kind of thing? Yeah, so right now the current implementation of flash para is built on top of Skip's POB. Um, so it's basically taking Skip's POB, all of their very Cosmos specific logic, and adapting it over to integrate into Flashbots. So it'll be all, not flashbots as in what we see on mainnet, but the flashbots interfaces. And what that allows us to do is it allows for searchers that are running their bots on mainnet or um, allows them to integrate their existing code into a Polaris chain. Um, again, with the concept of reducing friction for bringing Ethereum ecosystem devs into Cosmos because they don't have to go rewrite all their tooling, et cetera. Nice, thank you. Thank you.